morning, you are welcome to another edition of Import Export Platform Facebook Live from Street Investor Academy. I have a class this morning and I want to ensure I have this session, else I might not be able to take this session eventually. So I will talk as I drive. We will continue from where we stopped yesterday. Yesterday we are still discussing the types of letter of credit. Uh, remember, we are discussing starting and managing export business, and we are in part 51. And um, we are talking about letter of credit. Letter of credit. Letter of credit, like I defined earlier, is an undertaking of the buyer's bank, given to the seller, giving assurance of payment when shipment is made, and documents are presented that conform to the terms and conditions of a letter of credit. Letter of credit and undertaking of the buyer's bank, given to the seller, giving assurance of payment when shipment is made and documents are presented that conform to the terms and conditions of a letter of credit. That clearly says that letter of credit gives an exporter an assurance of payment, no doubt. However, that assurance of payment is conditional. And because it's conditional, it then becomes very important for such an exporter to be able to ensure that at the end of the day, it complies with the terms and conditions by presenting a document that com conforms to the terms of and condition of letter of credit. And we started discussing about different types of letter of credit. So we've discussed confirmed and unconfirmed letter of credit. We've discussed site and users or tenor letter of credit. We've discussed um, revocable and irrevocable letter of credit. We've discussed red clause and green clause, which we did yesterday. We've discussed revolving letter of credit. This morning, I'll be talking about back-to-back -back and transferable letter of credit. Back-to-back -back and transferable letter of credit. What exactly does this mean? Back-to-back -back and transferable letter of credit. Now, in some centers of the world, Places like Shanghai, places like Dubai, places like uh, United, sorry, London, United Kingdom, places like New York in the US, you have some companies who are basically trading companies. And what they do mainly is to connect buyers to sellers. You have some companies which are basically trading companies. And what they do mainly is to connect buyers to sellers. What do I mean by this? They connect buyers to seller in the sense that a major seller somewhere in China typically we want a middleman to be involved in his transaction. A major seller. By a major seller, I mean someone producing a product that hundreds of thousands of companies in, in the world would like to import. Now, that would be too much for them to handle. Because of the thousands of companies that would like to import their product. So what I do is to work with a company in Shanghai to cover Asia, a company in, in, um, in Dubai to cover Middle East and Africa, a company in um, London to cover United Kingdom, a company in um, New York to cover North and South America. And these companies in this center of the world are able to connect those buyers to sellers. But what happened is this. This company connecting buyer to seller also need to earn their income. They are not doing it for free. They are doing it to be able to earn their income because they have to pay salary. So what happens is they basically earn commission. They basically earn commission. Commission on the transaction being done. So, and with the aid of letter of credit, back to back letter of credit, transferable letter of credit, they are able to earn, they are able to secure their commission. They are able to earn, they are able to secure their commission. So in a transferable letter of credit, for example, the exporter will ship, the exporter and uh, importer probably met, and the exporter told the importer, please contact our middleman that we deal with, who help us with marketing somewhere in Dubai. That's if you are shipping, uh, importing into Nigeria, for example. Which is in Dubai. Now, so that means the Nigerian importer now we have to deal with the middleman in Dubai. The middleman in Dubai have agreed a price with the buyer, with the seller in China. So let's assume they agree a hundred thousand dollars for this item. 
that middleman in Dubai is also going to agree a price with the uh, Nigerian importer. In this case, if you are an exporter from Nigeria, the same thing can happen. You might want to ship abroad and you have to deal with a middleman also, the same manner. That means you ship to the middleman, the middleman ship to the final person. So in this arrangement, that middleman is the export. Uh, so that middleman is called the um, false beneficiary. First, remember in letter of credit, applicant are the importer and beneficiary are the exporter. In the letter of credit transaction, applicant, that's the person that applied for the LC are the importer and the beneficiary are the exporters. Applicant are the importers, beneficiary are the exporters. So the importer, in this case, being the Nigerian, um, being the, being the, sorry, the applicant in this case, being a Nigerian uh, importer, will be dealing with a middleman in Dubai. So that means the good will be shipped from China to Nigeria straight. But the document will leave China first of all go to Dubai before it comes to Nigeria. So here is what happened. Because the middleman is going to earn a commission, because the middleman is going to earn a commission, here is what the middleman will then do. The middleman can agree a price, maybe hundred thousand dollars with the chinese supplier and agree ninety thousand dollars with the nigerian buyer sorry agree hundred thousand dollars with the nigerian buyer and agree ninety thousand dollars with the chinese supplier so there is a markup there of ten thousand dollars there is a markup there of ten thousand dollars so the agreement signed between the nigerian importer and the middleman in dubai and an agreement is signed between the middleman in Dubai and the Chinese exporter. So what then happened? Immediately, the LC is issued from Nigeria. Remember, the LC from Nigeria now will be $1 million. That is okay from Nigeria will be issued in favor of the middleman in Dubai. When the gas middleman in Dubai, the middleman in Dubai will instruct his bank in Dubai, maybe Mashred Bank in Dubai, for example, to then issue an LC in favor of, transfer the LC, sorry, transfer the LC in favor of the beneficiary in China and it will reduce the price to $90,000. $90,000. So there is now a markup. There is now a markup between it for, for the, a markup for the middleman. So, immediately the Supplier in China receive this LC, of course he will ship the goods. As he ship the goods, the shipping document will be sent. Remember, the shipping document from China to Dubai is $90,000. That shipping document will be sent to Dubai. The Dubai first beneficiary, when the bank receives the document, will contact him and he will swap the document. The invoice from China is $90,000. He will swap the document and change the invoice to $100,000. That document, you know, the document typically will be, if you've been following this series, the typical document will be bill of lading, which is a transport document, invoice, parking lease, certificate of origin, and any other document that the letter of credit has stipulated. Those are the documents that will be sent. But the invoice or draft or bill of exchange will be swapped will be swapped with the swapped invoice carrying hundred thousand dollars plus the remaining shipping document good document will be sent to nigeria so when the document gets to nigeria the document is hundred thousand dollars that hundred thousand dollar document upon arrival in nigeria will be Examine, and if the document is compliant, the bank will pay the hundred thousand dollars. The bank will pay the hundred thousand dollars. When that hundred thousand dollars has been paid, it will go to Dubai. Remember, the Dubai bank has he was the one that transferred this letter of credit. He will then remove ten thousand dollars less his own charges, less his charges. So that means if his charge is five hundred dollars. You will remove $500 from the $10,000 and credit the 
middleman in Dubai with the $9,500. And then it remains $90,000. And that will be transferred. That will be transferred to China. And the Chinese supplier have his own $90,000. You know what has happened in this arrangement? This arrangement has made it possible for the middleman in Dubai to be able to earn income on the transaction and for the Nigerian importer to be able to still go ahead with this transaction. But please note, the middleman in Dubai is charging a fee, and the fee he's charging is legal. The fee he's charging is okay, is right. The fee he's charging most of it, more often than normal, even have been agreed with the supplier in the first place. With the supplier in the first place. So, the, and in fact, the supplier is very much aware of what is going on, the importer might not be very much aware, but the supplier will be very much aware because the supplier is the one that actually engaged the middleman. Why? He wants to concentrate on his production, research and development, improvement on his product. He doesn't want to worry about marketing and sales. So he engaged a middleman to do the marketing and sales. And this middleman might even have a target of how much he needs to sell in Africa in a particular year. So it is on the strength of the of this that the middleman is earning income. And there are companies around the world like this that the only thing is doing is connecting buyers to sellers. There are companies around the world like this that the only thing they do is to connect buyers to sellers. And when they connect buyers to sellers, they are able to facilitate the shipment of goods, facilitate the payment, and of course, earn an income on it. But look at this scenario. Remember, we are discussing type of letter of credit, and I talk about transferable letter of credit and back to back letter of credit. Back to back letter of credit. Now, in this arrangement, the LC that left, I'm talking about transferable now, the LC that left from Nigeria is the same LC that arrived in Dubai, and is the same LC that arrived in China. The only difference is that that else when it got to Dubai, it can be edited. You can edit the amount, you can edit the date, you can reduce the amount, you can also reduce the date. If the date is 30th of, uh, let's say the shipment is going to be done 30th of January, you can reduce it 20th of January. You are allowed to do 20th of January. You cannot extend it, you cannot increase the LC value, but you can amend the date. You can amend the amount by bringing it down by bringing it down by reducing it so that why is that allowed an expo an, uh, a, a middleman knows that there is tendency for delay and a delay on the part of the exporter will affect the payment of the middleman so here is what the middleman will do the middleman will ensure that if he's given 30 days to ship, he will give the export the exporter. Sorry, he will give the yeah, he will give the exporter 20 days to ship. That means he's trying to safeguard a situation whereby at the end of the day he is able to ensure that shipment is done as at when due. Because if shipment is done as at when due, that will constitute a discrepancy. And when there's a discrepancy, that will definitely affect payment that will definitely affect payment and that's exactly what this guy is trying to avoid that's exactly what the, the middleman is trying to avoid remember we're talking about transferable letter of credit and back-to-back -back letter of credit non-transferable uh anoro Non-transferable letter of credit is the regular letter of credit. Most letter of credit issued are non-transferable. Most letter of credit issued are non-transferable. Most letter of credit issued are non-transferable. So it's when you make it transferable that it becomes transfer letter of credit. Transferable means that a middleman can transfer that letter of credit to another bank. But a letter of credit can only be transferred once. A letter of credit can only be transferred once. But the beauty is that it can be transferred to more than one party. A letter of credit can only be transferred once, but it can be transferred to more than one party. 
A letter of credit can only be transferred once, but it can be transferred to more than one parties. This is very critical and important. A letter of credit can only be transferred once, but it can be transferred to more than one parties. A letter of credit can only be transferred once, but it can be transferred to more than one parties. So if I have an LC for $1 million, I can transfer 200000 I can transfer 200000 I can transfer 200000 I can transfer 500000 I can transfer 300000 Close the door. No, no, I want to. Do. The door is not locked. That's what I'm It can transfer 100,000. It can transfer 20,000. So the idea is it can transfer in bit and in bulk. It can transfer in bit and in bulk. It can transfer in bit and in. Uh, so at the end of the day, if I have $1 million, I'll transfer 100, 50, 300, 500 to different parties. Now, when a letter of credit allows you to transfer, when you want to transfer to more than one second beneficiary, then the letter of credit must allow partial shipment because those beneficiaries are not going to ship at the same time. Let me paint the picture. The man in Dubai can transfer to more than one supplier in China. The man in Dubai is allowed to transfer to more than one supplier in China. When he's transferring to more than one supplier in China, the letter of credit must allow for partial shipment because if you transfer more than one second beneficiary in China, they are not likely going to ship on the same day, on the same vessel. They're likely to ship from different ports, on different days, on different vessels. That means that letter of credit must allow partial shipment for that to happen. Let me now come back to back to back. So you know what happened in back to back? In back to back letter of credit, the middleman still remains, and that's the similarity between transferable letter of credit and back to letter of credit. The middleman still remains, but the difference now is that that middleman, that middleman, that middleman is going to get his own bank to issue a second letter of credit on the strength of a letter of credit it receives from Nigeria. What am I saying exactly? When that letter of credit is issued, the buyer, the end user, sorry, the supplier has told the middleman, guy, I don't want, I, 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 I will only deal with you. You can look for people to buy this product around the world, but please note, I am not going to accept from you a letter of credit that is transferred. I'm only able to accept from you a letter of credit that is issued for you, from you to me. The middleman does not have $100,000 to issue the letter of credit. Because the middleman does not have $100,000 to issue the letter of credit, you know what the middleman will do? The middleman will ask the importer in Nigeria, please, do you have any bank? No, he will talk to his own bank in Dubai. Which bank in Nigeria are you comfortable with? Such that if that bank in Nigeria issue a letter of credit, on the strength of that letter of credit, you can issue a fresh letter of credit. And that middleman says, um, 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 um. the middleman bank says, maybe First Bank Nigeria or Zenit, or GT, the tier one banks. Okay. GTB issued that LC from Nigeria to Mashred Bank in Dubai. Mashred Bank in Dubai now issue a fresh LC, based on the instruction of the middleman, issue a fresh LC to the exporter in China. The arrangement is similar. Because, stand, uh, no, Transfer letter of credit and back to back letter of credit are functionally similar but structurally different. Transferable letter of credit and back to back letter of credit are functionally similar but structurally different. What does that mean? They are functionally similar and structurally different. What that basically means is that they are similar in the sense that they perform the same functions. They perform the same functions. And what was the function in this case? The function in this case is basically to be able to ensure that the middleman is able to earn his own income. The 
but structurally similar in the sense, different in the sense that in a transferable letter of credit, the middleman, in a transferable letter of credit, the middleman, sorry, the letter of credit in back-to-back -back is two, the letter of credit in transferable is one. In transferable letter of credit, one letter of credit is issued. In back letter of credit, two letter of credit are issued. Transfer of credit, one letter of credit is issued. Back to back, two are issued. This is so critical and important. Transfer of credit, back to back. Transfer of credit, two, back to back, one. So let me paint a picture. Imagine yourself sending a mail to your friend and your friend forward that mail to someone else. If your friend edits that mail, before forwarding it to another person, that is a structure of transferable. If your friend copy that mail that he received from you, open a fresh mail, paste it, edit it, and send it to someone else, that is back to back. So in transferable letter of credit, we have one letter of credit issued. In back to back, we have two letters of credit issued. That basically says that the obligation in a transferable letter of credit is double. Is two banks are giving obligation to different people. The Nigerian bank is giving obligation to the middleman. The middleman is giving obligation. The uh, Nigerian bank is giving obligation to the middleman. The middleman bank is giving obligation to the Chinese supplier. The same thing for you in export. So that means for you as an exporter, you can actually have a middleman just the way Chinese will have a middleman. Still in Dubai to ship to China. Or oh, sorry, in Shanghai to ship to China or Asia. In Dubai to ship to other part of Africa or Middle East. In London to ship to Europe. And in New York to ship to North and South America. These are structure around the world. No. Anoro. In back to back. Not two copies. In back to back. Two letters of credit are issued. One from the, your, the importer's bank. To the middleman bank and second from the middleman bank to the exporter not two copies but two letter of credit not two copies two copies mean they are the same in this case they are not the same the content are similar but they have a lot of differences the content are similar but they have a lot of differences so in letter of credit in transfer letter of credit we have one letter of credit issue in back letter of credit we have two letter of credit issued two letter of credit issued I'll be running off now. I have a lecture this morning. That's why I have to quickly do this before I go for my class. Thank you very much for listening this morning. My name is Dela Imba. This is Import Export Platform Facebook Live from Trinity University Academy. I will see you in the evening by 8 p.m. as we continue starting a marketing and export business. And we'll be focusing on the principles that guide letter of credit operation. And most likely, the date. I think we'll start with the date first and then go to the principle. Thank you very much and have a great weekend. Remember this video go on YouTube. Please help us to share the video. Visit our YouTube channel, 3T Impacts. Help us to subscribe, share the video, comment, uh, click the like button, and click on also on the notification bell. Thank you very much and bye for now.